Hello, welcome to Anchat. My name is Chris Murrow. This is episode 33, Mirmiko Cori. Uh, on YouTube, I already have a uh, episode devoted to this. Uh, it's not like an Ant Chat official episode, but it is a uh, just on the topic of Mirmiko Cori. It was sort of like an experiment that I uh, did just... Um, well, let's get into this episode first off. You'll recall I had an episode on spring wildflowers. One of those was um, uh, trilliums, and there are, I have a bunch of trillium species in my yard. There's like about six in total, trillium grandiflorum being the most recognizable. Um, trillium cecily, simile? Cecily, I think it is. Uh, so, you yeah, know, probably next one to that. Uh, trillium luteum is another one. Uh, I think I have, I think this is simile that you're looking at here, but basically I have a bunch of trilliums. These are spring ephemerals, they come up, uh, they flower, uh, they love growing in full shade, so all this happens, you know, probably by May, they're pretty much done flowering. Uh, <coughs> these are important plants because they take about a you know, better half of a decade to get to a flowering age. Uh, from there, though, they actually will start dividing uh, flowering shoots, and they, you know, they slowly just uh, create their own little clump. So, you know, it's it's worth the investment if you want to buy a rhizome or something like that. Uh, rhizomes, b basically, it's like a... I think of them as like a mutant potato, um, as opposed to a corm, which is a real potato. <laughs> but basically, it's a deformed root-type structure that like slowly grows out in all sorts of directions and sends up uh, shoots from wherever it grows. So after flowering, you'll get this uh, berry-like structure. And uh, sometime in late July, August, uh, sometime September, uh, they start to turn a color and soften, and when that happens, that means they are two weeks away from uh, being harvestable. Uh, taking a look inside, we have here a uh, lots of uh, seeds, assuming pollination was done. Uh, a lot of these are pollinated by uh, carrion flies and uh, certain types of beetles. <coughs> so let's just uh, split this open here with a video, and we'll figure out what's inside, uh, get a better idea anyway. Uh, you see the seeds here, they're kind of like... Um, they're almost like glorified uh, popcorn uh, kernels, or unpopped uh, popcorn kernels, but attached to them is a, uh, is a uh, fleshy body called elasium. So you can see they're all attached here, and you can see these little spots here where pollination probably did not take place. So the berry can vary in size, uh, depending on how well pollination took place. And when they break open, they kind of... Uh, well, usually they're still attached to the plant, but here I needed to stage some things to demonstrate stuff. You can see it's just a bustling with ant activity. We have uh, Chromatogaster carossi, um, saw some Nylandria flavipus uh, walking around there. Uh, down below we have uh, some seeds that fell from the plant, which we were just looking at. It's sort of the thing leaning over. Um, come August, they really don't look uh, good. Like As I said, this are, they're spring ephemeral, so they come up for the uh, springtime, get their whole life cycle done, and uh, come summertime they're pretty much dead looking. And uh, even the fleshy body where the, the uh, berry used to uh, sit is actually, like, it's treasured uh, by ants. And uh, a couple other things that you'll see later on. But, you know, you see the, the plant, like, it's, it's perfectly fine. It dies back by now. You know, so, you know, don't expect to see this. Uh, oh, trilliums are monofloral, so you get one flower per shoot uh, that comes up. Uh, you may get multiple shoots, but each even then, uh, you know, if they flower, there's it's only going to be one for the year. So, you know, take good care of them. So having a ripped open uh, trillium thing, I uh, or, yeah, having a ripped open trillium pod, I placed it down on the ground, for uh, and it was quickly swarmed by Nylandria flavipus, uh, which is not the ideal thing to be transporting seeds. You see, they treat it as a food source as opposed to a food item. The difference being a food item is um, dragged home. A food source is hey, I've got to recruit all these ants. Let's you know come here. We'll take it you know from here. You know, we'll, come, we'll go to the food source and uh, eat it and dissolve it there. See, that doesn't transport the seeds at all. Another thing I noticed is yellow jackets taking a particular interest in uh, these seeds. I actually found a uh, hollowed out one and uh, you know that was still attached to the plant, and uh, the yellow jackets were like inside of there. So uh, I'm quoting a uh, phrase here from uh, with the help of, yeah, with the help of uh, James Traeger, I'm quoting a phrase. Uh, Sofico Cory, if that is. Yeah, that's it's like a weird word. I mean, I think we need to throw a few syllables in there. Sfikokori or something, something along those lines. Yeah, but generally there isn't a word, as far as I'm aware, of a wasp uh, seed dispersal, which is what you're about to see here. You see, he's just like ripping into the uh, the flesh, and uh, that's pretty much the stuff that he wants. 
The fun fact about Elysium on this uh, plant is, uh, nutrition will, yeah, nutritionally while speaking, um, it has more in common with a dead insect than it does like a sugar which you'd expect to come from a plant. So, this type of uh, food on the uh, seed is actually uh, very good at developing brood. <coughs> yeah, it has more in common with a protein and stuff. You see, you just took off there and. There's the Trillium Garden, not looking that good, but he landed a little short a uh, while a ways and attempted to chew the stuff off, so this still, uh, it transported the seed, but I've actually tried to, uh, pull Elysium off the, uh, seed, and, uh, it's, 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 that stuff is, like, stuck on there, like, I had troubles with it, like, getting my nails in there, you know, I don't know what the, uh, ants do, you know. Another thing, these seeds are a little bit, uh, a bit clunky, a little hard to carry, you see Aphnagaster, uh, coming into the mix here. <coughs> taking away uh, a couple of seeds that may have uh, fallen off. Um, Aphnagaster are like the perfect uh, thing to, you know, the perfect ant to be distributing seeds. Uh, they live in woodlands, typically, uh, you know, lots of woody areas and stuff, and they're the right size for the seeds to just, you know, grab it, pick it up, and walk away. Now, what we're looking at here is a very similar looking uh, species, uh, Tetramorium. The, the larger workers of Tetramorium, uh, Chaospidium, or I should say formerly Chaospidium, this is most likely species E or Teshumia. Anyway, the largest workers of these will resemble uh, superficially the uh, smallest workers of um, an Aphnagaster colony, or typical Aphnagaster colony, at least I should say. Um, and I don't know what happened this year. I installed a prairie garden and I expected good things to happen. What I found was all the Tetramorium colonies dispersed into the woodland areas of my yard, and um, it was kind of weird, because, like, I, I've never seen Tetramorium living like this, and their colonies are really, really small, and really, um, it, it's, it's almost like the big colonies got wiped out, and it's just nothing but young queens taking over, and it's all just a bunch of little colonies, but then why am I seeing so many large workers? Eh. Anyway, moving around, I decided to experiment a little bit with different ants, and see what would, uh, what would happen here. We have what I'm calling Lassius Neo Niger, though I, I'd do see some slight color variations that I don't think I'm supposed to see with uh, Lassius Neo Niger. Overall, though, they are this brown color, but some of them are like a little bit more bicolored than the others. And you can see he's actually got the uh, got a hold of the seed. And uh, this ant, it's um, it's like hit or miss with uh, certain types of ants, whether or not they bring the seed home. And uh, like they grab a hold of it, sometimes it, you know it's just too hard to get a hold of, and uh, the ant will either give up, but usually they'll at least, the very least, you know, leave a trail or something, so other ants can come and you know at least help or guard the food or whatever. It took this colony about an hour just to get this uh, seed moved about one foot, which you know, if, assuming a bird doesn't come along and eat it, that w that still benefits the trillium. You know, it still uh, dispense disperses seed. You know doesn't germinate uh, until the second year, and it doesn't produce any sort of a uh, flowering uh, growth until the fifth, or uh, ninth, as I said, better half of a decade for these plants, so... I should also say, um... Uh, I, I recommend people buy these from respectable sources, or go to, like, go to the forest and uh, see if you can, can't locate uh, something that's, like, producing seeds. Like, they would be producing seeds right now. Uh, in Canada, the, um, I'm not sure if it's all of Canada or if it's just a portion of Canada, but Trillium grandiflorum is like their state flower or region flower, whatever whatever province flower, I guess, would be what you'd call that, but it is illegal to d dig those up, because um, you can dig them up, but you have to, uh, like, it's better to wait till they've died back, you know, around now would be a perfect time to dig one up. Um, <coughs> You can see a, a thief ant in the background there, kind of checking out what's what's going on. Yeah. So anyway, you can uh, dig trilliums up, but uh, if you plant them uh, this year, they probably will not flower next year. They do respond, uh, you know, very heavily to uh, stress like that. Uh, also, do not fertilize. Even time-released stuff uh, that you know that you know releases slowly over the course of the year, that stuff will slowly kill your trilliums. Do not uh, do that. Um, uh, they do benefit from organic matter, typically, uh, in the soil that slowly breaks down over the course of, like, you know, three to ten years or something like that. So, you know, it's okay to have stuff decomposing and uh, creating fertilizer naturally, but it's not 
Like, don't use any sort of uh, chemical stuff. Like, you shouldn't be spraying anything on there or dropping pill time release to any sort of pills or anything like that. Yeah. So we're still watching this uh, Lassius Neo Niger try and drag. They're finding progress here, but they keep getting it, like, stuck in the, among the moss and uh, tree branches. Finally, we make it to, you know, just an inch away from the nest here, and you can see, um, I don't really have a good picture of it, but the uh, little patch of elasium on there has actually dried up considerably since they've started attempting to move it. And the loose debris of their own little mound here is actually preventing them from getting a, a good enough grip to haul the thing home. And I pretty much uh, killed an afternoon uh, doing all this stuff with the uh, seeds. You can see how I like spending my day off. Uh, got to record an episode though, so that was that was good. And it was kind of funny. I was watching them, you know, inches away, and oh no, a formica came up, and thankfully the formica went away. And I got bored here, and I kind of just there's like this red spider going after the formica. It's like a sim ant happening here. Yeah, so, you know, it's like, it's this, the seed basically became Excalibur, you know, who can drag it home? <laughs> Something very interesting, a Campanatus castanius from my neighbor's yard, uh, a colony in my yard died, uh, I think, but uh, anyway, <coughs> Campanatus castanius uh, found one of the seeds I was playing with, and you know, he picked the thing right up and walked home. <laughs> yeah, he's, you know, an ant that's actually bigger than the seed for once actually, you know, found the thing. And this is a ground nesting uh, campanata, so that is um, more than likely going to be a successful planting. And uh, so, uh, this has been Ant Chat, uh, Mirmiko Cory, and um, I have a blog, uh, Ants, Bees, Butterflies, Nature, at blogspot.com. Uh, the other episode of Mirmiko Cory is on the YouTube channel. Uh, you'll have to uh, you know, go, I'll probably have a link if you're at my blog post to that. And uh, thank you for watching, and goodbye.